welcome to episode four of podcasting until Ragnarok. If you haven't listened to the first three episodes, go ahead and give them a listen before listening to this. They are getting progressively longer as I am figuring out how to podcast correctly. Uh, this podcast is inspired completely by my blog, Writing Until Ragnarok, although it does discuss other things, not just the blog. And I try to post every Wednesday, you know, subs- you should subscribe to keep up just in case, because you never know, things could happen. Uh, before we jump into today's episode, I just want to provide some, what should be self-explanatory uh, COVID prevention tips. I know it's, it's hard to use your brain sometimes, but, you know, write these down if you need to. You should always wear your mask. And wear your mask means it should cover your mouth and your nose. If it's not covering your nose, you're basically not wearing a mask and you shouldn't go outside. So put it over your nose or stay the fuck home. Wash your hands or sanitize after doing anything outside. If you go to the grocery store, you should sanitize your hands before you even get in your car. Wash your hands. If you come home, first thing you should do, you should wash your hands. If you can carry sanitizer with you, that's good. Use it whenever you do things outside. It's just better to be safe. If you go into a store and they have some right there, which most of them do, just get a little squirt real quick. Better to be safe than sorry. This also includes, like, if you check the mail, you should probably wash your hands after you grab it because someone else was handling it. You don't know where it's been. Things like that. Uh, Leave items to be sanitized instead of bringing them into the house right away. This is specifically for grocery shopping, but if you do any other kinds of shopping, wipe stuff down with the Lysol or something before you bring it in. You don't want to bring the virus into your house. Obviously, cold items, you know, wipe them down first. Other things you can leave out for a few hours if you feel better. Something that I did before the virus, because I was paranoid anyway, but you could do now. If you buy new clothes, put them in the laundry. Don't wear them or hang them up right away. To me, especially if you get them at a mall or something, you don't know who's touched them and tried them on. You should. It's kind of gross if you don't wash them, honestly. Like... Bring it home, straight into the laundry, wash them that day if you want to wear it the next day, but please wash them. If you can, wear gloves when you're going out. That already eliminates the need to sanitize more often, which will help keep the good bacteria with you anyway. Wear some gloves when you're going grocery shopping. Throw them away on your way out. Wear gloves if you're just going to do anything. We have to wear gloves at work. We ask people to wear gloves when they come in. Sometimes it just makes life easier if you're wearing gloves. Plus, people will be like, oh, that person actually cares and is not trying to get the rest of us sick. And just really stay inside if you can. I know it's hard. You want to see your friends. You want to do things. If you can do things safely, that's great. But if you can, just, like, stay inside. Or, like, you don't have to go get the ice cream. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Like, really ask yourself... Do I need to do this or can I just like DoorDash it or Uber Eats or something? Like, especially if you're going to go out and not be safe, don't leave the house. So those are my tips. Again, I know it's hard to use your brain sometimes, but like really just give it a shot for once and see what happens. You might be amazed. All right, what's going on today? We are going to read Steve the Comma from my blog. We're going to chat about phase one of the MCU since I finished reviewing these films. And we're just going to talk about a few other things, but I'm going to leave those for mystery, so you have to listen until we get there. A uh, little bit of background about Steve the Comma. It, I wrote it for a presentation in my grammar and editing class, senior year of college. Kind of just came to me one day. We didn't have to write stories, we were just presenting. I was presenting on the Oxford Comma specifically, because I really like the Oxford Comma. And I kind of decided, I was like, hey, let's write a really cute story about an Oxford comma who came from Oxford. And it came about because of this one bitch who I already didn't like. One of my friends had her in a different class and she specifically said, I hate the Oxford comma. And I was like, you're even more uncultured than I previously thought you were. I didn't know you could get any worse. But it turned out she could. And so I decided, I was like, I'm going to take a shot at her in my story, (laughs) because what's the point of being a writer if you can't take shots at people you don't like? So I wrote this story in spite of her, or to spite her, whatever. And also, Oxford commas should always be used, and if you don't use them, you frustrate me and we can't really be friends. Alright, let's read it. 
Steve the Kama was born in Oxford, England in 2017. He wasn't just any old Kama, though. He was special. He was known as an Oxford Kama. He had a very important role in sentences and was taught all about his Kama responsibilities in school. When he was ready for his duties as a Kama, he was sent out into the world to find some sentences to help. His first real-world experience was in a formal paper at a university. He was a crucial comma in a long list of wrongdoings done by an evil dictator. The paper scared him a little. Were people really this mean to others? He tried not to think about it too much and just enjoyed his place in the sentence. After the paper was turned in, he ventured to an email by the professor to another professor. They were having a heated debate about the cultural implications of memes, and he was sent back and forth several times until one of the professors gave up. He sat in that professor's inbox for a few days before jumping into a new email that was going to a place he was told to avoid, America. In school, he was told that Americans had mixed feelings about the Oxford comma, and that many of them rejected the usage of them. He didn't understand why, though. He thought he was special and helpful. He was scared at first when arriving to America. He didn't know how they would react to him. At first, it was okay because the professor continued to use him correctly in sentences, but he was quickly rejected by a student after having been sent to her in an email. The student didn't like Oxford commas. In fact, she didn't like commas at all. He had a hard time leaving her because her hatred of commas meant she was avoiding them at all costs. Steve was really sad about this. He just wanted to help people. But this mean girl, who never gave a real reason for hating commas, was keeping him prisoner in her inbox. He was sad and lonely there for a few months until one day she had to use a comma, much to her disdain, and he took his chance to flee. He was sent back to her professor and later sent to other professors within the school. He hoped to never come across her or someone like her again. Though he missed his home, he stuck around within the university for a while before returning to Oxford where he was welcomed with open arms. Students and professors used him correctly in sentences and frowned upon people who didn't. He was so happy to be used correctly again and enjoyed every day that he was used correctly. He lived like this for a few years until 2020 rolled around and he was called back to Kama School to talk about his life experiences. He spoke about his journey to America and how miserable he was in that girl's inbox, but he also spoke about how grateful it made him to the people who used him correctly and told the young Kamas never to fear. Though there are all people out in the world who fear their greatness, there are others who appreciate what they do for sentences. Never give up, little commas. I hope you enjoyed that little story called Steve the Comma. I thought it was really fun to write and just cute to share with the class. Really though, commas are important to sentences, and if you pause in real life, you should pause in your sentences. So think about that. Now we're going to take a quick ad break before diving into the MCU. So recently for my blog, I decided I was going to review all of the MCU because it gave me something to do. I would be able to rewatch the movies and really pay attention to smaller details. And I'm just, I'm ride or die by Marvel, just for reference. So I decided to review them on my blog. I'm not going to go super in depth about them right now, but I will chat about them briefly. If you would like to read the full reviews, they are available on my blog writing into Ragnarok, which will be linked in the description of this episode. The first film is Iron Man. A L Iron Man is, is hit or miss for a lot of people. The first time I saw it, I really didn't understand it, but of course I was younger, and some things you just don't understand when you're younger. But it really is a great movie that sets up Tony Stark's character. It explains to you why he is the way he is a lot of the times, and also kind of goes in depth about terrorism, something we don't really see in movies. It shows how, like, a lot of the weapons that they were getting were coming from America, so all the bad guys just aren't over there. They're also here as well, and I think that was really good. But overall, it was just a great movie. Tony Stark is my favorite character. And it had some really fun Easter eggs, which you can also read about in the post. Iron Man 2, a movie that most people didn't enjoy. I understood why. Um, it was better than I thought it was after rewatching it this time, but before I was kind of like, what even is this? If you really think about it, like he was dying. He was just trying to live his best life before dying. 
I feel like a lot of people think that they would just be all like, oh, I'm going to mope and be sad because I'm dying. It's like, no, you would go out and do a bunch of stupid things because realistically there's no consequences anymore to your actions. So you can't judge him for doing what you would do. But if you pay attention, there's a lot of character development and overall plot. It also helps set up the rest of the MCU because at the end, there's a mention of Thor's hammer in New Mexico, Captain America's shield, things like that. S.H.I.E.L.D., the agency, comes into play more. So it's it's a pretty good movie. Um, I Again, I understand why people didn't really enjoy it. I think you have to appreciate Tony Stark to appreciate that movie. Uh, yeah. Thor. Kind of boring. W- was tedious to watch. I'm gonna be honest. It's just... The only Thor movie, let's be real, that's good is Ragnarok. The other two are just shit. Uh, Jane is terrible. Not the character. The actress. Natalie Portman just doesn't... I don't... I can't think of other movies I've seen her in. I don't know if it was just something about this movie. But she had, like, no facial expressions, no emotions, no nothing. She was kind of just there. And I understand that Jane, the character, isn't a damsel in distress, but she could still have emotions and facial expressions, I feel like. And the only good thing about this movie is Loki. Obviously. Just look at him. Thank you. Uh, Captain America, The First Avenger, a movie that most people say is boring. I actually was rather into it. I thought it was very exciting. Really set up his character well. Really fun to watch. It was interesting to see different perspectives on the war and morality. And Steve, I think it's just a great character. Uh, I really think that you should give that one a watch over Thor. Thor is boring. Captain America, it it really isn't. It was good. And then the movies after that just get better. So watch it. Seriously. Also, if you watch it, you like get sad over Bucky and learn that he is an evil. And everyone who says he's evil is wrong. And this leads us... To the Avengers, pretty good film despite the director. Uh, well, it was a really good film. It brings all the ca- characters together in a cohesive way while somewhat introducing new characters. We did meet Natasha and Clint before, but we didn't really go in depth about them like we did in this movie. I feel like it provided a lot of character development, especially for Natasha. Um, it gave me some feelings, but overall, it's just a great movie. I, it was the first Marvel movie I saw in theaters, if I'm remembering correctly, and was kind of what got me hooked on it. I do enjoy Marvel. I am not a comic book buff. I do enjoy the comic books, but I also have the sense enough to recognize that the movies are not going to be exactly the same as the comic books. So it's okay if they do some things differently. It's a movie. They have a two-hour time period. There's only so much they can do. Obviously, if there's a huge discrepancy, Joss Whedon in Ultron, thank you, then you can be angry, but like, people, I feel like people get upset over little details that are changed, and it's like, well, yeah, this isn't the comic book where we can have 50 issues about this one thing, this is a two to three hour movie where we gotta get through the plot, and there's only so much you can do in that time period. So, yeah, I think that if you watch it with that mindset of just, we're watching a movie, You should be good to go. For the full reviews, go to my blog and click on the reviews tab to see what I thought about all of them and to keep up with phase two, which I will be starting this Monday. I think the first one is Iron Man 3, which I'm excited about. Not excited about Thor The Dark World. Really don't want to see Jane again. Really upset that they're bringing Natalie Portman back, but I'm hoping that Taika can salvage it. So we'll see. And then there's... Captain America the Winter Soldier, which is arguably one of the best movies there is. Ultron, which was just an absolute pile of shit. So if you want to read about why, you should subscribe to my blog and find out. Because I'm going to go off on that one. Y'all are not ready for this. Yeah, that's the MCU. Other things I wanted to talk about, uh, as you may have heard in the last episode, I am listening to the Office Ladies podcast, which is Jenna Fisher and Angela, who played uh, Pam and Angela in the show. They're rewatching each episode of The Office, going in depth about what they were feeling as characters, stage direction, 
de uh, deleted scenes, scenes that didn't get filmed, things like that. It's really fascinating to listen to. Something that I learned is that the DVD, and j for the record, this might have been obvious, but we're just gonna ignore that fact. I learned that the DVD episodes of The Office have way more scenes and backstory than the Netflix version. There's a lot of... So Angela's watching the DVD and uh, Jenna's watching the Netflix version. So there's like, sometimes there's different subplots, different scenes. Obviously the DVD has like the deleted scenes and things like that, which are fun. So I'm super excited to watch the DVD versions to learn more about the characters that I didn't know before. I got the DVDs because, uh, is it NBC? I think it's NBC. Is taking The Office off of Netflix because they're like, we're gonna put it on our own streaming service. And everyone's like, screw you, we're just gonna watch it illegally. I'm not, but that's what's gonna happen. Let's be real. We told the streaming services when they got started, if they narrow it down too much, piracy is gonna come back. I have never done that. I have most streaming services that have the main things. I'm not gonna pay for NBC's stupid one. The only reason Disney is okay is because it has bigger thing. It's not just like Disney princesses, it's got other things. Netflix is still great. I don't think Netflix will ever die. Hulu is okay. We're iffy about that. Amazon Prime is pretty good. HBO Max, from what I've seen, is good. I don't know that I would pay for it. I'll probably have to pay for it to watch certain things when they come out. But yeah, I the fact that they're taking the office off of Netflix is just an outrage. And what will I have on 24-7 now? Still the office, probably. Uh, this past Saturday, yes. DC Fandom. I didn't watch it because I forgot. But I saw everything after. Again, I am ride or die by Marvel. I've... I appreciate certain things about DC, I've never been a huge DC fan, but I feel like they're really stepping up their game now, because they were like, hey, let's have a whole day where we're just going to drop all of this shit on you and give you the same emotional reactions that Marvel likes to give you, and I'm like, you know what? That's good, that's smart, y'all are figuring it out. Also, I'm lacking Marvel content, so here I am. Uh, but before we get into what they announced, I want to talk a little bit about what I do enjoy about DC. I'm talking mostly movies. DC Comics, I have little to no experience. I think I own like three. So just, yeah. We're just going off of movies here, thank you. And just like, kind of stuff I know. I know a lot about Harley Quinn, because like, I love her to death. Uh, I did enjoy the Wonder Woman movie. I think that's a wonderful movie. I love to watch it all the time. I liked Aquaman. Just, he's hot like I I don't I feel like if I sat down and analyzed it as a movie it probably wouldn't be as great but if you just sit down and you're like I'm gonna watch this hot man do things you're good to go it's a good movie <laughs> I really like that movie um Suicide Squad don't come at me I enjoyed that movie uh the extended version is better obviously because there's more scenes and builds up a little bit more but I enjoyed that movie, and it has a bomb-ass soundtrack. And even if you don't like that movie, you have to like that soundtrack. Seriously. I enjoyed it. I realized they kind of threw it together like a, a video game. Like, they just, like, shout out a bunch of characters and background. Here's a generic villain. Go beat the drones and then beat the villain. I get that. But you know what? Harley Quinn was in it, and that's really all I need in life. Because I love her to death. And another thing, again, don't come at me. Jared Leto's Joker wasn't that bad because you know what? If you're going to be mad about something, be mad about how they decided to portray Joker, not how he portrayed the character that he was told to portray. He did the job that he was supposed to do. It's not his fault. And I think a lot of people seem to kind of blame him for it. And it's like, no, he was basically told to be some sort of psycho gangster. So that's what he did. Like, obviously it's not going to be as good god what's his name i think heath ledger his joker was like top tier joker but also the whole dark knight series was just the best batman and you can at me at that i will fight you on that but before we get there birds of prey also a really good movie i think a lot of people didn't enjoy it because of the way the story was told it wasn't it was told out of order and it was kind of more comic booky 
so I feel like people didn't really enjoy it. Again, bomb ass soundtrack, you should go listen to it, especially if you're female, it's definitely empowering, but I think it's a really good movie. I'm also biased towards Harley Quinn, anything she's in, I will watch and probably enjoy. Margot Robbie does a great job as Harley Quinn, that's it. Uh, yeah, Dark Knight series, I really like those movies, I think Christian Bale is, or was, has been the best Batman that I have seen. I feel like, and here's why, I'm gonna break down, he's good as Batman, the movies are great because they're kind of dark and gritty, like how Batman kind of has become, but also, he portrays Bruce Wayne well. When he walks into a room as Bruce Wayne, you're like, okay, that's a sexy billionaire. Like, that's what you expect. Ben Affleck doesn't have those vibes. N I I'm sorry. This is just my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to like it. I'm just talking about, this is my podcast, okay? <laughs> ben Affleck kind of just looks like a bum when he walks into a room. Like, you could put a suit on him and comb his hair all you want. He doesn't radiate Bruce Wayne vibes. And his bat suit is kind of chunky. So, yeah. I just... The Dark Knight series, to me, is just the best uh, Batman movies there are. I am excited for the Batman with Robert Pattinson. I think that's his last name, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes because I want to get through the other movies. I didn't see all of Batman vs. Superman. I think I saw the end of it, or like parts of it. It it seemed like a lot. Part of it is I don't like Ben Affleck as Batman. Also, his suit is chunky. I think I said that, but I said it again. And it just, it feels like a really long movie that was trying to compensate for the fact that Civil War was happening in Marvel. Uh, I feel, I, DC seemingly has reached the point where they're like, no, screw it, we're gonna do their own thing. But for a little while, they were trying to copy what Marvel was doing, and that's kind of where they went wrong. Because Marvel had much more build-up, and DC was like, let me throw a bunch of shit together. I am debating rewatching it, just to really, at least be able to, like, have an opinion on the full movie, not just me having seen parts of it and making assumptions. Uh, I don't think I can sit through the whole thing at once. I think that's going to be a in-sections kind of movie. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to give it a watch and see what happens. I don't have high expectations for it, but I, again, I feel like I should watch it before I really just, like, rip into it. Uh, Justice League. I feel like, as a community, a superhero community, we should not let Josh Whedon do movies anymore because Zack Snyder had that shit down and then Joss Whedon came in and was like let me fuck up everything and make this movie not so great and that's exactly what he did uh I have seen it I do want to rewatch it just because like I don't think I was fully paying attention the first time I watched it but we can all agree that that movie isn't what it should have been and I think that them releasing the proper version of that movie is really just gonna be like, what am I trying to say? It's gonna be good. You're gonna watch that movie and you're gonna be like, that. That is what we should have gotten the first time. Now, I do enjoy Aquaman and Wonder Woman and The Flash in that movie. Uh, Superman, I like Henry Cavill, don't get me wrong, as The Witcher, he's just chef's kiss flawless in that movie is i wasn't a fan of the way superman was portrayed so i'm really hoping that the new version of it is better but now that we've talked about that let's get into what dc is doing now and correctly wonder woman 84 i again i love her i'm super excited i'm willing to go to a theater and see it I'll wear two pairs of gloves, two masks, whatever I gotta do, but I'm gonna go see that movie. Like, let's go. I'm really excited. Um, obviously, or maybe this isn't obvious, if you look at the, the I think her na character name is Cheetah. It's, I think it's Christian Wig. She kind of looks like one of the characters from Cats, which is infinitely more horrifying than I think they intended it to be. Because obviously that movie cats is really a horror movie if you think about it so when i saw that i was like mm, 
we're gonna have some nightmares up in here. <laughs> but other than that, I'm super excited to see Diana grow as a character. I really would like an explanation as to, I think his name is Steve, Chris Pine's character as to how he's alive, what he's doing back. And just overall, I'm excited to see that movie. I think it comes out in November. I don't quote me on that, but yeah, new trailer looks good. Uh, what's next? The Suicide Squad. Not Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad. Um, I am super fucking excited for Harley Quinn's, like, new but original look. As I, I liked her outfit in Suicide Squad. Like, I liked what they did with the character. It was like, let her be fun and different. But I think it's kind of fun now that they're really going back to the black and the red and it kind of looks like one of her arkham outfits if you look at it and i'm just i'm super excited for that because that means that after birds of prey she's just really really grown as a character and as a person and i'm really excited to see who this new harley is she's very clearly started over after joker and i'm just ready for it I'm a little bit unsure about the large amount of characters that they've thrown in there, but from what I've seen with that behind the scenes thing, half ass trailer, whatever it was, I think it's going to be pretty good. I already forgot who the director was, but it seems like he knows what he's doing. Uh, I don't think John Cena should be in it. That's a little bit weird to me. And I'm also pretty sure Polka Dot Man is the same guy who played Scarecrow in the Dark Knight movies. And I feel like he did a good job as Scarecrow, and I don't know that Polka Dot Man is... <laughs> you know, it's just a Polka Dot Man, really? But, you know, we'll see. Again, I'm gonna go see it, but they have some, some soundtrack hype to live up to, because Suicide Squad soundtrack, as I said, was great. So the Suicide Squad soundtrack also has to be great, but it doesn't just have to be great. It has to be better. So, we'll see what they do with that. Uh, the Batman. The Batman. The one with Robert Pattinson. I am fucking ready. It, it almost has, like, the, the Nolan vibes, like, the Dark Knight vibes, which I'm super excited about because it's more gritty. It's creepy. I feel like he's great. He looks great as Bruce Wayne. I don't find him attractive, but I think he's doing it right. I am super excited to see it. I have no idea what's happening. It's all very dark, I, but I am ready for it. Also, it looks like Catwoman has an important role in this, and I think Catwoman is the same actress who played in X-Men First Class, the stripper fairy. Uh, yeah, you, if you've seen the movie, you know who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> but I'm super excited for that. I think it'll be good. I really do think he's going to do a good job. I'm, I'm very ready for it. I need it now, and I think it comes out next year, but we'll see. Uh, the Snyder Cut of Justice League, I kind of already talked about it, but I am a ready to be emotionally wrecked, because you know what, fuck you Joss Whedon. It looks good, it looks dark, it looks messed up, it looks like it, what it should have been the first time. Especially with none of this weird CGI, let's get rid of Henry Cavill's mustache. Just make him fucking shave it. That was mustache was a mistake, we can all agree upon that anyway but yeah i'm super excited for it i have no idea if if it's a similar plot i know dark seed dark side dark mm, you can tell i'm not a dc person i know he's in it along with the oh god the names you know what? we're gonna skip the names the villains in this movie as i'm not about to get have a bunch of dc fans come after me for the names well i guess they'd come after me for other stuff but yeah, I think it'll be good. I'm super excited. This is what I would need HBO for because it is to my understanding that they're releasing it as four one hour episodes on HBO Max. So I'm going to have HBO Max for, I guess, a month. I don't know. We'll see. Other things they announced, um, and I might miss a thing or two just because it was like, just barely announcements, nothing like solid. Uh, the Shazam sequel and Black Adam are not the same thing I thought they were gonna be. I have no information about, about Black Adam. I know that if you've seen the Shazam movie, it was this whole thing. It was like, 
5,000 years ago or whatever, we chose a champion we chose poorly. I think Black Adam is that movie. It's the champion that they chose poorly. And I'm pretty sure that's going to lead into Sh Shazam 2. Because I'm pretty sure he's going to come back. That is my guess. I, don't come at me. I really don't know. Uh, a video game. Based off of the Arkham video games. Or whoever made Arkham. Whatever. The Arkham games are great. Suicide Squad. Kill the Justice League. That looks awesome. I'm so ready for that. I've played some of the Arkham games. I really enjoyed them. And it, it it has the same vibes. So I'm super excited for that. I'm also just super excited to play as Harley Quinn. And not as Batman fighting Harley Quinn. Anyway. Yeah, I think that'll be great. I also like her outfit in that. Because she's kind of got like the little blue and pink buns. But she's got the normal outfit. I don't know. I'm super excited. Um, The Flash. They just had some concept art. But I think the movie is kind of going to be similar to or based on the Flashpoint Paradox movie. Uh, which, if you haven't seen that, that's a uh, the cartoon movie. It's really good. The Flash goes back in time to stop his mom from being killed. But then it completely alters the future. And I don't want to spoil it. But I'm also really excited to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it. If you don't want to hear it, just skip to the end of the podcast because this is going to be it after this. Um, he goes back in time to save his mom. It, that changes everything. So he doesn't get his powers in this future. He doesn't end up with his wife. Batman is uh, not Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne's father, whose name escapes me. And the Joker is Bruce Wayne's mother. Because instead of his parents getting killed that night, he gets killed. So they cope differently. The dad becomes Batman, but he's okay with killing people, and the mom loses her mind and becomes Joker, and it's really freaky, and then, and this is where it gets even crazier, Wonder Woman and Aquaman have an affair, and Aquaman's wife, Mara, catches him, so she goes to confront Wonder Woman, and they fight, and then Wonder Woman kills her, obviously, because she's Wonder Woman, like, it's not even a fight, and then Aquaman gets all mad about it, and he's like, you killed my wife, and she's like, Okay, one, you slept with me. Two, she attacked me first. So, like, you, you know, I'm, uh, Aquaman was being a little shit. So then the Amazons and the Atlanteans go to war and essentially are destroying the world in that war. And it's just, it's, it's fascinating. I don't think they're going to do all of that for the Flash movie, but that would kind of be cool if we're being honest. <laughs> I'm so excited for that. Um, there may or may not have been another announcement or two, that, but if it wasn't a trailer or something that I wasn't already aware of before, I didn't pay that much attention. Overall, I'm really excited with the way DC is going. Like I said, it feels like they're kind of finally just doing their own thing. I think the only thing that's going to confuse my brain is the fact that the movies now, I don't think, are all based on the same universe, or some of them aren't going to be. They're going to be their own thing. Like, the Batman, I think, is... I think is in the Arkhamverse, actually. I think that's in the video game. Again, I don't know for sure. I just read things on the internet. So, I think that'll be a little bit confusing. I think my main thing when watching them is I'm just going to have to watch them and be like, I am just watching this movie, and then this movie is just this movie. Obviously, Wonder Woman... Two is going to be the second one that's connected to the first Wonder Woman. But beyond that, I'm not going to connect it to the other movies. That's, yeah, like, if, if they're, like, a sequel, that's fine. It's connected to the first one. But if it's not, I'm just going to be like, this is just an individual movie that I'm watching. Let's see what happens, and I think you should, too. So that's what I had to talk about today. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to see what I talk about next week because I don't even know. Uh, follow my Twitter for updates. It's at Celine Lafay. That's at symbol S-E-L-E-N-E-L-A-U-F-E-Y. That's also my Instagram if you want to check me out. Uh, and go check out my blog, Red Angel Ragnarok. It will be linked in the description. I'll also put my Twitter in the des description. Uh, you can subscribe to my blog to keep up with the Marvel uh, Phase 2 and see what else I do. Uh, thanks so much for listening. I hope you're all staying safe. Please don't be stupid. Have a great Wednesday.